Intellectuals are dealt with in an intelligent manner. This is what our scriptures do. Who are the intellectuals? Their attention is on everything except on themselves. And therefore, they are extrovert. And therefore, they are expert in blaming others for all the problems of their life. This is a default setting for all of us. If I am a mother, I am miserable because of my children. If I am a wife, I am miserable because of my husband. If I am uh, an Indian, I am miserable because of the Americans. So, till such time, we keep blaming others for all the problems of our life. What will be our approach to life? So, the first example. I, as a mother, is miserable because of my children. So, what will be my spiritual life? Try to improve the children. This is called impossible undertaking. <laughs> and because of that, we become miserable in life. And then we blame God or, or karma or something. Therefore, what is required is just to think cool way. Now, how we go the wrong way, I'll give an example. Then we'll come to the right way. There was one lady who came to meet me in the morning at about 9 o'clock. And uh, she told me, Swamiji, people are very bad. I said, look here, I am not the manufacturer. Don't come with complaints to me. Do you know what happened? I said, I do not know. I don't want to know. Friends, try this. We don't want to know anything about anybody. No need. See? You know what happened? I said, I do not know. I do not know. See, but they will keep on talking. Then, uh, you know, my neighbor, she came in the morning and gave me sweets. I kept quiet. Do you know why? I kept quiet. <laughs> Her son came in merit list. And therefore, she came. Then I said, Mama, what are you talking? If my son comes in merit list, I will also distribute sweets to the people around. You don't know. I said, okay, you tell them. She said, she did not come for that. What ladies can think, God cannot think. <laughs> so, she said, 
Do you know why she came? Because my son failed four times. Therefore, she came to tease me. My son came in merit. Your son failed four times. See? So I kept quiet. Then next question. But Swamiji, why other people's children come in merit class? Why my son is failing again and again? Complain. So what can I say? I say, look here, Mama, I'll tell you. If the plant is that of the chilies, will the tomato come to that plant? Swamiji, so, what you talk, I don't understand. I say, thank God. <laughs> See, friends. And therefore, what our scriptures tell is that we have to be very clear that whatever happens in our life, we are squarely responsible for that. Nobody is responsible for anything that happens in our life. Number one. Number two. Nothing happens in our life which is not required. Everything is required. See? Now the first principle. Whatever happens in our life, it is not because of others, because of us. So, one husband came and asked me, Swamiji, I am fed up of my wife, what should I do? I said, divorce. You will get another one. No, I can't. Why? She is earning. <laughs> I am not earning. Then, but tell me why this happens. Now I had to tell as a Swami. I said, look here. In the last life, you have tortured her. And therefore, in this life, she is taking a revenge. <laughs> but I don't remember. You may not remember. But this is the truth. But then what should I do? Now behave properly with her. Then what will happen? Next life she will not be your wife. Really? <laughs> I am ready for anything. <laughs> See friends. Now come back to the principle. So, when I accept this, that I am squarely responsible for all that happens in my life, the first thing that happens in our life is we stop blaming others. When we stop blaming others, we are practicing knowledge. Don't blame anything or anybody in this world. Because when we blame somebody, that factor enters our mind and it will keep us getting disturbed because of that. See? Therefore, our scriptures help us telling this thing called as law of karma. And intellectuals immediately accept it. See? So, whatever good or bad happens in my life, it is because of me, not because of others. See? If I am putting on lot of weight, and if I say, I don't know why people give me so much of food and I am putting on weight. They may give food, but you are not a buffalo. You should understand how much to eat, how much not to eat. See? Now, once we take this stand in our life, that whatever happens for that, we are squarely responsible. Now, what is the principle behind it? <clears throat> the principle is, imagine a big picture of the size of this wall made out of oil painting. Oil painting pictures are very ugly to look at. They are good for a distance. Because you can go nearer to the wall, you go two inches distance. From two inches, see that big portrait, 20 feet by 30 feet, long one. 
and you are nearer to that picture by two inches, four inches. What will you see? Okay, okay, okay. I am going too close to somebody. Therefore, I can't then become angry and go far away, five miles. Then you can't see anything. This is what is our life. Either we are too close or we go too far. If you want to see the beauty of this big portrait or a painting, what is required? Stand at an optimum distance. See? Don't get involved in anybody's life too closely, nor run away from anybody far away. How do we get too closely, we, in, we get involved in everybody's life for every small little thing. See, beings are not things. We can move the chairs here and there. People are not like that. They are living beings. Because we don't understand this, our scriptures tell that law of karma, now here, most of us get caught and that is called as the principle of soul. In the last life, you have done this thing, therefore you are born here, you got married and you are enjoying or suffering and whatever you do in this life, next life you will be born again. And we accept it. We think ourselves to be intelligent. No, it is not so. Story is the same, what we understand is different. See? So what we understand, average people, that I am suffering because of this, I was there, then I died and then I was born. Friends, one of my very good friends, he is very old, must be 90 plus, I don't know whether he is still there or gone. I used to have my talks in uh, Mumbai from 7 to 8 in the morning in a very beautiful place. So big crowd. After my talk is over, then he used to uh, talk on yoga or demonstrate. Very old man, but his body was like rubber. He could do this way, that way. And um, so in between 15 minutes gap, so I used to sit with him and we used to have coffee, tea, but he will not take anything. And then he asked me, Aji, do you know this thing? What? I can tell my earlier births. So he told. In the last birth I was in Dehradun. There I was in such and such family. Before that I was in Jabalpur. There I was in such and such family. He went on telling. Then in the seventh life, I was a parrot. He said, I can go back to anything. I got that vision. I, can go back. I said, very good. Then he said, I can do it for you also, if you want. I said, I know also. You also know? Yes. What? In the last life, I was a donkey. <laughs> in this life, I continue to be. <laughs> now, what we have understood? See, in the last life I was there, good. In this life I am there, next life I will be there. What you have understood? Before coming to Cape, I was in Durban. Before Durban, I was in PE. Before Port Elizabeth, I was in Benoni. Before Benoni, I was in Johannesburg. Before that, I was in um, Nairobi. Before Nairobi, I was in Mumbai. Where did I die? Mumbai did for me when I left. Then I was born in Nairobi. Nairobi did. Then I was born in Johannesburg. Johannesburg did. Then I was born in Benoni.
Benoni dead. When I was born in P.E. P.E. dead. When I was born in Durban. Durban dead. When I was born in Cape. Tomorrow Cape will be dead. <laughs> I'll continue to be. Who died? And who is born? Have you thought about? But we are so obsessed. Karma, 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 karma. Drop that dumb thing, karma. See? I was in Switzerland with my friend, his wife and two children. So we were searching for a restaurant to have food. So from a distance we saw something, we went there. Then my friend and his wife went to talk to them, what is available and all that. I was sitting there. Then uh, my friend came and asked, Swamiji, what should I order? I said, what is the name of this restaurant? He said, Karma. <laughs> I said, we'll get Prarabdha. <laughs> that Karma, Karma, Karma is such a dumb thing. But people get extremely enchanted by that. This happens, why? Because? Because of the error. Basic error. Basic error is, there is one soul per body. Like there is one soul per shoe. In the same manner, there is one soul per body. See, take out all of them, make a soul curry and enjoy. See, friends, unless this error is corrected, we will be lost in all unwanted things. See, everywhere this is the thing. You take Buddhism, Jainism or any religion, everywhere they have got the same thing. There is one soul per body. See, and you know the beauty of it. They never define what is soul. There was a very good friend of mine and uh, he had a million followers and he was a follower of Bhagwan Dattatre and big ashram. He had his wife, two children, everything. So once he happened to meet me somewhere and uh, so I did Namaskar Chamatkar to him and then uh, he said, Yes, what can I do for you? If you have got anything to know, I can know for you. I said, okay, sir. What is the meaning of soul? We all the time tell, it's a good soul, bad soul. Bad soul, change it. What is the meaning of soul? And other than the meaning, he spoke everything. Good soul, bad soul. Because whether you take yoga, whether you take karma, whether you take any religion, there, this is the basic error. This is one soul per body. Till such time, this error is maintained. What will be our spiritual imagination? I want liberation. Imagine, you are standing near the waters and you see your reflection in the water and imagine, and the reflection starts talking. It is so dirty pool and since I want liberation from this dirty pool. So when that reflection is talking, that time something falls and the water is not only turbid and dirty, but also shaky and it starts shaking also. Oh God, I am suffering too much. What should I do? Oh God, let the water be clean. And then the reflection starts removing all the dirt, makes the water steady. And then, aha, now I am liberated. 
This is you read my story about spirituality. I cannot be liberated. We have to get freedom from I. It's not difficult. Only you have to have clear understanding. This example I also quoted a number of times. In Germany it happened. Many years before. After my two days uh, retreat was over, then third day, we were just going for outing here and there. So one lady, German lady, she asked me this question. Swamiji, um, you should have come in my life 25 years before. I said, even then I would not have married you. No, 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 not for that. Then I would not have divorced three times. I said, okay, now four times don't divorce. Do you know why? I said, I do not know and I don't want to know. Then she said, now I realize where I had gone wrong. Now I realize. See? I said, okay, now you answer my question in, in exchange barter system. When you got first time married, so your couple, if we have to define it in a formula, what will be the first time married couple? W1, H1. Wife 1, husband 1. W1, H1. You divorce. Then you got married second time. W2, H2. Third time, W3, H3. Now the question is, who is the wife? Is the wife W1 or W1 plus 1 is equal to W2? Or W1 plus W2 is equal to W3? Answer this question. So when first time you divorce, where the wife has gone? Or is the second wife the addition on the first wife? Or the third wife is the summation of the three? Who are they? Where are they? Swamiji, I don't understand what you are talking. I said, okay, I'll tell you simple words. See? Define wife. What is a wife? Can you show the wife? See? In US it happened. One uh, American asked me this question. Swamiji, can you tell me I have always a doubt? So I kept quiet. He said, you Hindu ladies, they have a dot com on their forehead. What is the meaning? I said the meaning is your chance has gone. She is already married. <laughs> oh, oh, it is like that? Yes. But then gents don't have anything on their forehead. I said there is no need. By looking at the face you know he is married. <laughs> See. So where this wife has gone? Can you define a wife? Can you define a husband? So who is the husband? If you want to define the reflection in the mirror, what you will do? Our self face reflecting media mirror and our face reflected in the reflecting media the mirror, these three things together constitute the reflection. Now, among these three, who is miserable? Man is never miserable. Mirror has no miseries, no joy. It's just a reflecting media. Who is miserable? Reflection. Think. Man is not miserable. The wife is not miserable. The husband is miserable. Now, where is the husband? See, friends, when the wife goes or dies, what happens to husband? Nothing. See, there was a couple married for five years. And then one day that girl, out of great love, she said, Ani, darling, yes, um, I want to ask you, if I die, 
he she uh, he immediately plucked her mouth don't say that i'll become mad no no change the topic another 5 years gone then she said now look here you are married for 10 years i know your answer no no still i want to ask you wife said she said suppose i die last time you told that you will get mad yes now tell me suppose i die then will you get married again he said i won't get that mad <laughs> oh another 5 years gone 15 years after 15 years again that lady asked the question honey darling if i die will you get married he said mad person can do anything <laughs> see friends and who is miserable this non existing entities are miserable how can you help them see friend how simple it is only you have to correct your understanding of life therefore when it is said that we are expert in blaming others for all the problems of our life the first step to practice knowledge is don't blame anybody for anything that happens in our life we are squarely responsible number 1 second thing i told you every event is necessary for our evolution every event is necessary nothing happens wrong in our life everything is necessary see like take this event in bhagavad gita there was no reason why arjuna was dejected and frustrated no reason he came to fight the war but then bhagwan sri krishna created a situation for him to get confused and what was that he told in clear terms you don't have to fight with the enemies you have to fight with the near and dears see how simple it is and because of that only bhagavad gita came to us imagine bhagwan krishna has told to arjun that let us start the war not telling anything else but he did that that you have to fight with your near and dear that created a big challenge for arjun is it not true we are never miserable because of anything or anybody except our possessions and our relations see now tell me who is the one who is most near to us and it is because of that we suffer the most see the buildings are not near to us our uh, possessions are not near to us our relations are not near to us our mind is nearest to us and we are all suffering only because of this mind see if i suffer because of somebody i can go away if i suffer because of my own mind where will i go because wherever i go there i am see friends so once we are convinced that the real practice of knowledge is we have to work on our mind not on the body not on the things It is so simple, friends. 
You can come across many places. They have everything. There is nothing lacking. And yet, they are lonely in a crowd. See, because they have never taken care of their mind. Now for this, if we are convinced of this, now the second step. Everything happens only to the mind. Nothing happens to body. See? Nothing happens to body. Only to the mind. One of my friend, a Gujarati friend, invited me for dinner to his house. After that, when I was going to leave that place, he says, Swamiji, please bless our grandmother. She is not well. So after eating food, I can't say no. Chalu ki. So I went and that lady, she was in coma. And there was a nurse standing there. So I spoke to the nurse. Coma, what can I talk? So I spoke to her. Hey, how are you? Fine. Good. Um, So, she <clears throat> was lying down and I talked to the nurse. Hey, how come everything is fine? Are they paying you sufficiently? I prayed to the Lord that may you continue with this lady as long as you don't get other job. Till then she will continue, don't worry. <laughs> that very moment the owner came, the friend. Swamiji, I said, yes, I am blessing. I took her hand. In. Now, what can I do? Who can challenge what I have done? And thereafter, I left. Third day, he came for the lecture and said, Swamiji, thank you very much. You have relieved her from her pain. I got her. I said, look here, don't cheat yourself. A person who is in coma doesn't suffer. The one who pays the bill, he suffers. <laughs> See, friends, so when we are clear about it, that who are we? Are we body? Or life expressing through the body? But because of this body identification, somebody is born. And that somebody doesn't exist. A non-existing entity, how can you help somebody? See, friends, and therefore our scriptures tell, stop blaming others for anything that happens in your life. Number two, every event is essential for our evolution. Every event, good or bad. Had there been no confusion created by Bhagavan Krishna for Arjun, he would never have asked anything else. See? And therefore, we become alert. Now, what is that alertness? This is Bhagavad Gita in one sentence. What is Bhagavad Gita? Wherever, whenever, whatever you are, be 100%. Where was Arjun? On the battlefield. When? At the time of the war. Wherever, wherever, whatever. Now on the battlefield, who he should be? Should he be somebody's grandson, somebody's disciple, somebody's brother, or he should be a warrior? Think. Exactly. 
this is all the problems will be solved depending upon the situation we have to interact not react so after telling everything to arjun bhagwan krishna did not ask him did you understand did you get the knowledge will you like to do the meditation can you imagine bhagavad gita was told before the war in between the two armies will there arjun say excuse me meditation time oh no it can't be do meditation do chanting the lord's name it cannot be then what happened only this wrong notion was corrected we are all the victims of wrong notions our wrong notion is we don't recognize who am i at a given period of time in a situation this we are not able to remember see i see somebody's wife then i start feeling very bad so am i what happened to you yaar i should have got married you know i would also have a wife like this. who can help me see friends therefore remember this principle that we are squarely responsible for everything and everything happens in our life for our good now next step stones and bricks you are this uh, flat mountain what you call that table, table mountain that mountain is without the legs yet it is a table <laughs> first time when i came with uh, my friends they took me to show the table mountain by the what you call that lift ha uh, and uh, i was not interested uh, i have seen real table what is the mountain so no no sir we should go so i had to go that time these kids were small and i was not interested but they forced me so i said okay and it so happened half way that trolley which was coming it got stuck neither it could go down nor go up and then emergency is going to fall down and then somebody went on the rope and blah blah blah, 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 blah. i said you know what to what to go there <laughs> see <laughs> so we have to recognize this anything that happens in our life is for our good so the stones and bricks are inert plants eat from below grow upwards animals eat from the front grow backwards human beings eat from above grow downwards and sideways <laughs> what next see the wheel of creation no eating then eating from below eating from the front eating from above next eating from back and growing forward no meaning as regards evolution is concerned we have reached the acme as human beings we have reached the highest hereafter the only evolution that is pending is spiritual evolution and for the spiritual evolution that almighty god out of concern and love for us he creates such situations that we have to rethink about our life See? so if you start understanding life then what we have done till date if we are to write or autobiography in one line what will be that 
right from childhood till date, I have been struggling to fulfill my desires unsuccessfully. What else we have done? So what is our life? Want to fulfill our desires. And then one desire, second desire, third desire, there is no end to it. And when our desires are not fulfilled, we get frustrated, dejected. Instead of that, if you take that as a message, you are going the wrong way, take care. Is it not? When we get a toothache, is the toothache given to us to punish us? To make us miserable? No, to tell us, hey, something is wrong, take care. In the same manner, when you get hurt in your life, for whatever reason, it is a warning. You are going the wrong way. What is the wrong way? Wrong way is unsuccessful struggle to fulfill our desires. Desires can never be fulfilled. You fulfill one desire, second is standing in a queue. What about me? One story I created somewhere. There was a king. He had a son, naturally a royal child, not ordinary. And he was crying for no reason again and again. The children cry, they forget about them. No, no, no. It's a, it's a royal child. What do you want? Give him. So he was brought in the assembly, all the ministers, and the useless child is crying. So, yes, prince, what you want? No, I want a buffalo. Get a buffalo for him. So, a buffalo comes. Again he starts crying, eh, now what you want, the king, the prince? Get green grass, green grass. Eh, now what you want? Feed the grass to the buffalo. Feed him. I, eh, now what you want? Milk the buffalo. Milk. I, eh, now what you want? Put the milk back in the udder. King said, give him one heart and get him out. <laughs> Our condition is like this. See, friends, we have fulfilled our desires in a sequence, one after another. Yada sarve pramuchyante kama yasya vridhisritaha athamartyaha amruto bhavati atra brahma samashtra. Therefore, what is the practice of knowledge? Fulfillment of desire is samsara. Freedom from desires is liberation. See? There was a devotee. He was chanting Lord's name. Narayana came with his Guru helicopter. And uh, he said, Hey Bhagatji, come, I'll take you to Vaikuntha. I don't want to come alone, I want to bring the whole world. Narayana started laughing. Don't worry about you come. No, I want to. Okay, go and bring anybody. I agree. No, ID proof will be required. So Bhagatji goes, where? First, to a sannyasi like me who has got a huge ashram throughout the world and he has got many disciples and he had decided to construct a huge temple of Narayana. So the Bhagat goes, the devotee goes, Sir, Swamiji Maharaj, this is the offer. We can go to Vaikuntha. I can't come, see. I can't leave the ashram like this thing and I have to construct that temple. I have got order already, already uh, put the marbles and that Narayana statue I have already given in Jaipur to make it there, you know. How can I leave it halfway? 
direct Narayana has come and is holding on to the statue. The devotee got frustrated. Went to a Vanaprastha. Vanaprastha is he who is preparing to uh, get into the sannyas. So he went to the Vanaprastha. Vanaprastha, the retired person said, I am not mad. Now my great grandchildren are born. After their marriage only I can come. <laughs> Devotee God, Bhagat God, very frustrated. Went to a Grahastha. You come. He said, are you mad or what? I am just married. I have to live a long life. Not, not, go, go, go. Then he went to a student, Brahmachari. No, I have to study. I have to study Sanskrit. I have to study computer. I have to, wow, 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 wow. I can't come. He could not. Now the devotee got frustrated. Finally, he <laughs> went to a pig. Mr. Pig, this is the offer. Will you like to come? He said, I'll ask Mrs. Swine. <laughs> so he went to Mrs. Swine and asked, this is the offer. Should we go? So she said, ask them whether our food is available there or not. <laughs> Bhagat ji came all alone. Narayana was laughing. See? Who wants him? We have to do nothing. What is that which makes us happy in deep sleep? If somebody doesn't get sleep, he will take pills and go to sleep. What is that? Learn from your own experience. In deep sleep, we are free from the virus of desire. Imagine you have to catch the morning flight. This happens with me every time. Therefore, any time I have to wake up, I have no problem. I never use the uh, alarm clock. See? So, when you have a flight to be caught in the morning, so you calculate, I have to go three hours before from house to that place, one hour drive. So I should leave at such and such time. Therefore, I should finish dinner and sleep earlier so that I am not late. We calculate. And then we go to sleep. After every 20 seconds, we see, is it in? Why? Because that one sankalpa, one desire, that I have to catch the flight at the right time. Whole night is destroyed, is it not? We have got Himalayan desires. Whole life is destroyed. See, my friends, and it is for this purpose, God creates these situations in our life. Anything which is wrong according to our understanding is required for our evolution. See, friends, for us, only this is the life. For him, total life. See, and as a result, when we are able to thus focus attention on that there is somebody who is functioning through the body. Body never goes through any experience, good or bad. See, the vision looks, colors and forms. It doesn't become influenced by anything. Mind alone is experiencing everything. You know, to understand this, take an example. When some of our appendages, like you know the foot or the toe, if the toe has to be operated for whatever, what the doctors do, they give us local anesthesia. Even my eyes were operated for cataract on the 1st of January this year. So, my friend said, you come, Samiji, this time, we'll do it. So, I didn't know what is the operation and all that. So,
So he said, uh, Swamiji, uh, we are already prepared everything. Now go and lie down there. So I went and he washed my eyes with some liquid so that it is not dirty. And then he started whatever operation he has to do. He was talking to me. Swamiji, I have done this thing, now made a hole, and now through that hole I am putting the liquid. Now the cataract will be dissolved. After it is dissolved, I will suck it out with a syringe, and then we will wash it again with some liquid, and then I will put the lens there. He was talking to me, nothing happened to me. Explained everything. And after I got up, he said, no, you can go home. Over. See? Because... Mind has not entered there. See, friends, everything happens only to the mind. Nothing happens to body. Therefore, to practice knowledge, the step is mind your mind. That we never do. We mind somebody else's business. Take care of yourself. And how to mind our mind? It is for this purpose, this our happy mantra mala. See? So the first mantra is what? Life is a time pass. So what is a time pass? Time pass is that wherein victory and defeat is not the issue. When we play with the kids, see, in one of our children's camp, they were insisting I should play with them. I said, no, I can't play. No, no, Swamiji, you have to play. We listen to you, no, listen to us. I said, okay. What was the game? Game was cricket. I said, look here. Rules will be mine, not yours. Then I'll play. They say, okay, come at least. I said, first rule, I will do only batting, no fielding. Number two, I will never be out. <laughs> Agreed? Say, okay, come. Say. So, two, three balls here and there I hit. And then the boy who was bowling, he said, how many LBW? I said, it can't be. Because you can't see my legs. <laughs> how it can be LBW? Leg before wicket, isn't it? Samidhi, you don't understand. For you, the rules are different. What? Lungi before wicket. <laughs> now for me, victory and defeat was it an issue. But for the kids, I have clean bold Swamiji. Friends, play the game of life. Victory and defeat these are all our imaginations. Everywhere you can learn these things. Therefore, I told you, practice of knowledge is learn. One more example I give you how to learn. Somewhere, uh, this uh, football match, FIFA was going on. And uh, it was going on somebody's house because I don't have a house, I don't have TV. And I don't know what is going on where. So there it match was going on. And everybody, I was watching also. Hitting that poor ball here and there, here and there, he hits, he hits. I was feeling pity for the ball. So why they are hitting the poor ball? So I told, I said, you know, I feel pity for the ball. Somebody said, what will you do? I said, what I will do, I will tell you. How many players are there? 22 players. 11, 11. I don't know whatever number it may be. I will buy 22 balls, give to each one of them, play, don't hit each other. Now, after the game is over, what they say, we have got four goals. Where is the goal show? Were they fighting for the ball? They were not fighting for the ball. They were fighting for the goal, which doesn't exist. Look here, we are all fighting for nothing. 
and this can be done only if we learn from our every experience whatever we wanted in life we got it after we got it have we discovered fulfillment in life I should uh, study hard. I should get good grades. You get it. Then I should get admission in good college. You get it. Then I should complete my education in good colors. You get it. Then I should get a good job. You get it. Then I should get a good wife. You get it. I should get children. You get it. What next, friends? We have to learn. we are all running after something which doesn't exist and therefore we have no fulfillment in our life because we don't learn the way is the fulfillment in our life whatever you have been doing you are tired and all that and you come home finish your dinner supper and sleep ah <sighs> the so what is the sleep when you give up effort don't demonstrate now when you go to sleep observe the step by step what you are doing we discard the world we discard possessions we discard relations we discard the house we discard all the priorities in our bed after having discarded everything what is the last thing that we discard the one who discarded he also has to be discarded so ultimately what is the last mantra goes on i want to sleep i want to sleep till such time i and want is sleep doesn't begin so as i told you practice of knowledge is not freedom for i freedom from i are we one inside i am man i am husband i am father i am brother i am rich i am poor i am patient i am doctor i am indian i am non indian we are a crowd inside <laughs> if you go to a poultry farm and enter there do you think the birds will keep quiet exactly the same way inside it is a poultry farm constantly ko 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 only because we have not learned from our own experiences therefore practice of knowledge is correct your focal length and look at the life from an optimum distance if you want to see the beauty of this world don't be too close and don't run away from the world maintain an optimum distance and play the game of life not to win not to get defeated but for time pass om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं